Hey, what's up? It's Vonnie Hudson with securityplusPro.com and welcome to this quick video that'll go through six essential Linux commands you absolutely need to know to not only pass the Security Plus exam, but also just to be awesome when it comes to knowing Linux. So we are going to cover, <clears throat> excuse me, we are going to cover ping, IP, if config. Then we're going to look at netstat, we're going to look at ARP, and we're going to look at traceroute. All right, I think that's six if I know how to count. Let's jump right in. I'm going to show you everything right now. So I am sitting at my Kali Linux box. And most people, when they use ping, they just type ping and then the IP of a target, which is fine. It'll ping it all day. That's not what we want to do. We want to hit ping, and then we're going to type dash dash help so you can see some of the options. And one of them is this dash interval, right? So if I type the same command I did before, but I add a dash I and I hit five, when I press enter, it's actually going to wait five seconds between each ping. And you can see here, I set the first one and then it sent the second one. And there's actually a five second gap between each ping request, which I think is pretty cool. So we can stop it by pressing control C. And if we don't want to wait, let's say we wanted to flood the target, then there's another option, which I will show you right now. And by the way, do not use a ping flood against any target for which you do not have explicit written permission from an authorized individual in that target organization. In other words, we're not hacking, right? We, we, are, we are testing inside of a controlled environment or we are testing with the target personnel's permission. Okay, I just wanna make sure we get that out there. So now I am going to ping this particular target, which I control, and I'm gonna use the dash F argument to flood it. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna go over to my Windows server. You can see this is my Windows 2016 server. Right now, ethernet activity is pretty low. This guy's pretty happy, right? Let's go over to Kali, we're gonna hit enter. And now we're gonna go back to the server and you can see that ethernet activity is starting to spike, which could be a problem if this machine has to respond to legitimate requests from hosts on the network. So obviously a ping flood is a big issue and you wanna make sure that perhaps your router denies incoming uh, or maybe it, 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 it will refuse to send the ICMP echo request back or perhaps it just stops listening for ICMP echo requests. So ping is definitely a good protocol to block if you don't need it. So I'm going to press control C there. If I wanted to ping a target a specific amount of times, I can say five and that will ping it just five times. The dash C switch basically stands for count. So I'm saying ping it five times. That's the count. If I wanted to ping a target and perhaps resolve that name. So if I have this website, securityplusbro.com, and I wanted to resolve the name, I'll ping the domain name and I'll put a count of one so that after I press enter, I immediately get back the IP of that target. It's pretty cool, right? So now let's look at if config and IP. So if config is the deprecated version of IP, people still use it because it's super handy. You type if config and you get the IP address of your host and you also get the mask, but IP is better and it's forward. It's the future. Okay. So you need to be using IP. The way we use IP is we just type IP space A, bam. And that is my IP address. And this is my mask. It's a 24 bit mask insider notation. I also have my broadcast address as well. Okay. So if you want to do some stuff with IP, maybe you want to tur turn a link down or you want to add a link back up. In other words, you want to disable the link. You want to enable the link. You can type IP and then link set. And then you have to set the device. And I got ETH zero from here. And then you can say down. So we can go down like so. And then if I type IPA, the device should be down now. And you can actually see up there, it did go down. If I refresh this, yeah, you can see now the device is down. So I am now completely offline. And if I press the up arrow twice and I change it from down to up, you'll notice now the connection is trying to come back. It looks like it is connected. So now if I type IPA, I'm back and I have my IP address, exactly what I needed, okay? So if you wanna look at the IP route, you can type IP space R and that will show you your route. Right now, I am on this particular network, the 1.20.0, 10.1.20.0 slash 24 network. And I am using 10.1.20.1 as my default gateway. If I wanted to change that, I can just type IP route add 10.1.20.0 let's say my default gateway is going to be dot two. I can say dot two, 24, 
That's a 24-bit mask. So it's 255.255.255.0. It's 24 bits. Each decimal number is 8 bits. So 8 times 3 is 24. Uh, sorry I'm going through this really fast. And my goal is really not to teach you subnetting. It's just to show you these commands. So you've got this 24-bit uh, mask applied to this particular network. And if I want to add the gateway, the only thing I need to do is say via and then the route to get there. And so actually, I always mess this up. This is the network 10.1.20.0 slash 24. And the way to get to that network is 10.1.20.2. That would be the default gateway. So then if I typed IPR, you can now see that it has been updated. And of course, if you want to change your default gateway back, you would just press the up arrow a couple of times and change it from add to delete. And you probably already guessed that. All right, and then just make sure everything is good. Cool. Okay, so now we're going to look at Netstat. Netstat is pretty awesome, and in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to go ahead and start up a few services. So right now, if I type Netstat, and we say dash AT, we can look at all the TCP listening connections. There's nothing there. If I type Netstat dash L, you can see I've got a lot of connections here, but there's really nothing listening under the active internet connections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip open a new tab, new tab, here we go, and I'm going to say sudo service Apache to start. And then I'm going to say net netcat. I'm going to listen. I'm going to make it very verbose. Don't resolve names. Listen on port four 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 four. So now I am listening. I should be listening on port eighty and port four 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 four. If I go back here and I press up arrow and enter, scroll up. You can see now I'm listening for HTTP on all adapters. See, it says listen. And I'm also listening on 4444 for uh, all adapters as well. So this is a very good way of seeing, um, seeing what's going on in your computer. Of course, you can also type netstat-at to find all TCP port connections. This is a really quick way of finding TCP. So A for all, T for TCP. If I did U, it would show UDP connections. So that's pretty cool. Let's finish up with TracerT and ARP. So if we use TracerT, of course, we can trace the connection. It's actually not TracerT. I always get this confused. It's traceroute, OK? So if I did traceroute to google.com, it's going to try to ping its way there. TracerT is what we use in Windows, right? That's the whole point, purpose of Windows. It, well, not the purpose of Windows, but the TracerT command is a beloved friend of Windows. And uh, Kali Linux is a beloved friend of the trace route command. So this is just showing you hop by hop, router by router, between you, the client, and the destination. How many routers are there between you guys? And if you get a bunch of asterisks like this, um, it just means that it's most, more than likely one or more routers are blocking these, uh, these ICMP messages, these trace route packets as they're traversing the network. And that's pretty common in most organizations. So don't be too disturbed by that. But this is one way that you can map the topology of your network by using Tracer T. And finally, we will use ARP. And ARP is really simple. It just shows you the MAC address to IP mapping. And here it's showing that the MAC address of my default gateway is DC01. And that is for my gateway. If I type IPR, I can get that gateway address, which is this one right here. Now, if I wanted to confirm that, that that actually is my default gateway, I could probably SSH into it. 10.1.20.1. Okay, so we just logged into the router. Let's do show IP route. I'm sorry, show IP interface brief. And you can see here the 10.1.20 interface goes to 10.1.20.1. And this interface is up. This is a default gateway. And if I did a show run, and if I included 1.20 in the result, well, I might need to get a little more than that. Let's just do show run the whole thing so I can look at it. You can see here that this particular interface is in the 20 subnet. The sub, I'm mean, sorry, the VLAN name 20. And if I go to my topology diagram, I can see exactly that's right. So I am Kali Linux. I am in the 20 engineering domain and everything is all good. So 
Awesome, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Vonnie Hudson, and make sure you thumb this video up. Make sure you leave a comment. And more important than that, head on over to securityplusco.com where we release weekly free content such as this. You can have it delivered directly to your inbox, all the tips, all the tricks, all the awesome hacks that you need to pass a Security Plus exam. And also just to be awesome, all right? So make sure you head on over there right now. Thanks for sticking it out with me for these uh, 10 minutes, and I will see you next week.